Hello, it is the start of week four in our fourth grade classroom. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, if you're new to my channel, my name is Marieli Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. Today is Tuesday, September 6, 2022. We just came back from a three day holiday weekend since yesterday was Labor Day and I'm coming to you at the end of the school day. So I just wanna give you a quick rundown of the day. It wasn't that much because I still had kids that hadn't finished their Wonders Unit 1 Weeks 1 and 2 assessment on Friday since we are now taking it on the computer through Performance Matters, so I had some of those students work on finishing their tests while the other students worked on the summer short story which is an activity for writing that I do sell in my TPT store I mentioned it last week so let me show you how my example looked for this morning's class so students first complete a planning sheet and they kind of think about different topics so I did give students three different choices for this activity they could either focus their writing, their short story, on something they did this summer, or their favorite summer activity, or what they like about summer. So during my block two this morning, I chose eating watermelon, and then I start them off with some words that they can gather as million dollar words, and then some other words that they can add related to that activity that they circled. Then on the back, they can write their first draft. So here's my first draft. And then they read it out loud to see how it sounds, to make sure it makes sense, and to make changes as needed. And then they give it to a peer so that they can read it. And that person can give them a star and then a wish for their writing. So then the students came up and I will start reading their stories and then they were ready for an index card. So they will copy their story into an index card and then they could choose either a blank short template or one with doodles. I chose a blank one and I just decided to do my own doodles on watermelon. So here's my story, my final draft. I wrote my name and then all my doodles and then I colored it with crayon and I glued the index card on the space that's provided. Here are the examples of the other short templates that are available. So they have a beach one, they have one with kites, they have one with video games, and they have one with movies. And of course, the blank one, which is the one I chose for my watermelon story. I also gave students some examples of story sentence starters so they know how to write their story starter or start their story. And then on the back, they had closing sentence starters so that they had an idea on how to end their story. This was the planning sheet that I completed with my afternoon class. So I decided to write about Animal Crossing and I collected some words for that. And then I wrote my short story on the back and I conducted all of these steps and now it's ready for me to rewrite it and then decorate another pair of shorts. Which I'll do tomorrow since my afternoon class, which is my block one, I start with them tomorrow and they actually didn't finish, but I believe all the students that were finishing their reading test did finish that, so that's done. I still have one student that needs to finish, so she'll just finish tomorrow and that is from my block two class. I also wanted to show you what I am assigning for homework this week so that you can have an idea of what I am doing since I do have one class that is more advanced and then another class where I have ESOL students. So this is the differentiated homework that I have planned for my students for this week. And since last week, I've been doing differentiated homework actually since the first week, I think. Well, the first week I didn't assign homework, but week two I assigned homework and last week I assigned homework and this week as well. I digress. Let me show you. So for my advanced students, Wonders has these differentiated passages. So this is the one for my advanced students. They all have the same passage, stormy weather, but what changes is the word count and some of the vocabulary. So they have these questions to answer based on the skills that we're focusing for our new unit, which is unit one, weeks three and four. We have the Florida edition of Wonders. And because we're working on elements of story, I decided to use my story elements flipbook, which is something that I showed last week towards the end of the school year. Basically, the students write their name, the date, the story title, in this case, is Stormy Weather. And then they're going to add who the main character was, their description, where and when was the setting. So they describe that, an important event that happened in the beginning, middle, and end. And then for the conflict, they describe what the conflict is and the resolution of that conflict. Then to dive deeper into character analysis, I told the students that they can quickly draw a portrait of the character, which is from the shoulders up. And this was a quick sketch that I was trying to make. It's not final. But once they sketch their character, they write their name, 
the name of the character, I should say. They put what the character thinks, does, says, feels, and how the author describes them because this is how we get to know a character. So for my advanced class, this is all that they got. But for my other group, about half of the class got this little tiny anchor chart that goes over what each of the story elements are that I created. And again, this is their passage, Pre looks pretty similar. They have some sentence starters for their answers and they still have their story elements flipbook that they are still going to complete. So I did give it to them all paper clipped, even my advanced kids. And then for my ESOL students, they also have the same passage, but it looks a little bit different and they have more sentence starters there. But I also gave them the story elements anchor chart with bilingual words in Spanish because all my ESOL students, um, their native language is Spanish. So I went ahead and I gave it to them so that they understood what each element of the story was so that they could understand as they were completing their books. And I should say I'm okay if they write it in Spanish because I just want to see that they understand. And we're going to also use the Story Elements Flipbook this week during class, probably tomorrow, since we're introducing the new unit and I want them to know how to complete it. This week is going to be kind of like not a lot of time for instruction because on Thursday and Friday of this week, we are giving the first progress monitoring state assessment. Our state, Florida, is moving into progress monitoring assessment, which is three times a year. So the first one is this week for my fourth graders. On Thursday, they're taking the reading one, and on Friday, they're taking the math one. And it's just like a state assessment. We have to make sure any visual aids are covered. The seats have to be in rows, and they're doing it on the computer. So it's new so this year is the baseline so they're taking it this time of the year and then they'll take it again like in december and then the final time in may where they will get a level so we'll see how it goes this test obviously will be for information so that we can see what are the areas that we need to focus on as it relates to instruction and meeting the needs of our students and that in a nutshell is what happened today tuesday so i'm gonna leave you so i'll see you tomorrow for wednesday Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday after school. I am still feeling a little bit stuffy as you can tell by my face. And I also have like this headache on this side of my head. So I'm very tired, but I made it through Wednesday and it was a day where we were mostly working on finishing our summer short story. I went ahead and made another example for my morning class. So I'm gonna show you that, and that's pretty much what we were working on for today, since Wednesday is a short day. So I was spending a lot of time conferencing with students. I conferenced with every student in every class except for one or two students, because they were still working. So I will have to get to them once we're done with state testing, which starts tomorrow morning. I was gonna put my desk in like an inverted or like a U where I can see the screens, but like I said, I'm not feeling well and I have an appointment right now in like 10 minutes. So I usually get here early in the morning anyway. So I'll just go ahead and do it tomorrow morning as soon as I get here and get ready for the day. So let me show you the example and then I think that'll be it for Wednesday. So this is the second planning sheet that I had shown you yesterday that I chose to talk about Animal Crossing and that is the first draft. And here is the completed shorts template. So I did go ahead and choose a blank template and drew some Animal Crossing kind of symbols and a lot of leaves because leaves are also known in Animal Crossing. And that is my final setup. So now I have two pairs of shorts <laughs> that I have as samples. And I do have some Minecraft ones that I did at some point, but really cute. And the students are really enjoying this activity and I can already see the different things that I want to go over with them. Since we're doing state testing this week, this week was going to be kind of short. So I'm going to bring back patterns of power next week and I'm going to start with some basic skills that I'm noticing that the kids need to make sure that they reinforce and they understand like something as simple as making sure they capitalize the letter I when it's by itself or making sure that they have a complete sentence or using correct punctuation. Now, obviously, when we do patterns of power we have to focus on one skill at a time so I'll just see what are the lessons that are available and I'll choose based on that so getting ready to do that next week so it'll be a full school week next week 
And then the following week, we have one more day out for teacher planning day, but we're just gonna roll it and see where it goes. All right, so let me get going and I will see you tomorrow. Hello, my friends. It is the end of the day on Thursday and what a long day it has been. My students, my homeroom students, took the FSA, or actually, it's not FSA anymore. This is how tired I feel, plus I have a horrible headache. The FAST, that is what our new state test is, FAST assessment for the state, progress monitoring one, and I have to say, it was not FAST, because <laughs> my last couple of students finished by 1.45. We ended up starting at 9.30 because I was missing one of the testing tickets, and I couldn't start until I got it. So once I got it, we tested for an hour. They went to lunch. After lunch, we continued testing until 1. Most of the kids were done, so my co-teacher took them to music, and then I was left with five students that slowly finished until 1.45. And then we were all done. By the time we made it back to the classroom, it was around 2.20 because we were um, doing something with them on the, in the hallway outside. And then they came in, they had their snack. And after snack, what am I going to do the last 30 minutes of the day? I'm not going to teach something, especially after a very long day of testing. So we just had some free time. And right now, the room... Uh, out of all the days for the AC to not be working 100%. This was another day that is not working 100%. So I have my fans going because it's a little bit warmer than usual. So yeah, I'm going to go home because it is 4.06 and I wanted to go home earlier, but I was helping out with this missile and there was this first grader that has been here since the 150 dismissal and we were trying to figure out where he was going and figure out the bus situation and then finally got a hold of someone that's going to pick him up. And then dealing with another set of students has been, it's been a day. <laughs> and I, I'm hurting. I'm in, my head hurts really badly. And I'm a little bit concerned because I've been having more headaches than usual. So anyway, I think I'm just exhausted and stressed out and tired. Exhausted and tired, the same thing. But anyway, I digress. I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, we are now at the end of the day on Friday, September 9th, 2022, and it was another long day of testing, not as long as yesterday. Most of my students finished right before lunch, and I had like five more students that needed to finish after lunch. So overall, everyone finished by 11.30. And then I just had them work on finishing their summer short stories. We started going over our homework, which I showed you what it was earlier this week. And I just finished planning for next week and coming up with the homework assignments. So I wanna give you a sneak peek on next week and show you some of the things that I put together because I do differentiate my homework since I have ESOL level one students, so ELL learners who are just learning English, and I also have my gifted group or my advanced kids. So I have homework for advanced, intermediate, and ELL students. So let me pick up my lesson plan, uh, and I hope I just noticed that there was a fan <sighs> right on top of my printer, and I am probably going to have to print my lesson plans again, depending how it looks, because it looks kind of, <laughs> well, maybe I won't have to, but these are my lesson plans for next week. Yeah, they look good. This is where they go. I just put it in this little uh, paperweight that you can hold papers up. I just have my lesson plans up on here and then at the end of the month i just you know put them away and or at the end of the grading period i put them away but the other previous lesson plans are here as well like this week's and please stay up please stay up okay so i haven't really finished our wonders unit one weeks three to four so we're doing a lot of that next week as part of catching up. We're also starting essay writing, so we're doing argumentative writing. So we're starting with the rubric, then we're looking at the prompt and uh, looking at a student model and going over the different steps that I have gone in the past. So introducing them to analytical essay writing based on a text that they have written or multiple sources. So that is my lesson plan template. And these are the passages that the students will get for homework. It's called It's Showtime. So this one happens to be the intermediate one. This one is the beginning one, which is good for my ELL learners. It has more pictures. It has still the same story, but scaffolded questions that they can answer. 
And this is for my advanced kids. So as you can tell the difference between all the different texts. So the whole entire text is on one side. And then on the back are the questions. And they're not scaffolded, so they just need to answer it in a complete sentence. And they're also going to fill out the story elements graphic organizer that I put together. It goes together with the anchor chart that I showed you earlier in the week. So I just created a little graphic organizer for them to use with this passage. On top of that, I went ahead and I put our vocabulary words. I didn't give it to them this week, so they'll just get it for homework for next week. So they have all eight of our wonders words. And what I do is I find little icon pictures that go along with the meaning of the word. So this is their study guide on the first page. And then on the back, they have some connect to word questions so that they can practice with those words. They have completing the sentence. They're gonna write a short story using at least four of their vocabulary words. And they need to make sure they include character setting, conflict and resolution. So it's touching upon the reading skill that we're working on. And on the back, I'm having them complete three vocabulary maps on the three words of their choice from this week's words. So I also have one of these for my ELO learners, but for them, the only difference is that they'll get the cognates for the words that do have cognates. So that is my differentiated homework for my students for next week. I also forgot to share this with you yesterday, but I also created this little booklet to help the students get introduced to our new unit in Wonder. So it has the essential question. One of my groups did watch the video. So these are guiding questions to help them take video notes. And we will then do the study blast next week, Monday. The other group will do both. So we do the study blast. And again, these are guided questions to help them get notes in there. And I created this myself to go along with our units. And then over here, when I read the read aloud, I want them to do some think alouds or some student think alongs. So these are the questions that they will answer as they are listening to the read aloud. And then we have our shared read. So I'm having them survey the text and make their predictions and then go ahead and go over the conflict and how it is revealed in the beginning of the story and how the dialogue helps show that. And then they go over idioms because that's another skill we're working on this week. And again, going over the resolution, who the change agent was, how did the grandmother give more advice and how was the conflict resolved. So this is a little nice little booklet to go along with that. And that pretty much does it for week four of our school year. And I am ready to go home. It is late. It is almost 7 p.m. I told myself I didn't want to do that, but I get distracted. I tell myself, okay, we're going to go home, but then let me go ahead and do the lesson plans. And as I'm doing the lesson plans, I start thinking, okay, let's figure out what we're going to do for homework. And as I figure out what I do for homework, I'm like, oh, let me create a new graphic organizer, hence the story elements graphic organizer. And then I'm like, oh, let's go ahead and do the vocabulary. So that took time because I have to find the little icons that go with the meaning of each word and then figuring out the activities that they're going to do. And I created the new vocabulary maps on the last page. Some of the the activities I just needed to just change the sentences but some of them like the vocabulary map I had to recreate it so that ended up taking time so sometimes I think oh it's not gonna be that long and then it ends up being like three hours later but anywho I'm gonna go ahead go home enjoy my weekend much deserved weekend and I will see you next week. So I hope you enjoy coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. It's free. And hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day. And don't forget to smile. Hello, dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.